Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. And we are continuing our web series AWS for Developers. And this is the continuation of the chapter ECS. In the in, in this chapter, we learn how we can deploy our ECS cluster using EC2 capacity. So in this video, we will see how we can deploy our application in ECS cluster. So we are using the existing cluster that we created in the previous video. Uh, and if we go to the ECS instance, so we will see uh, a EC2 instance is already provisioned. That means the capacity we are using or the capacity provider we are using for this specific cluster is EC2. Uh, in later video, we will see how we can use the Fargate profile to deploy our application. So at the moment, so there are two types of implementation in ECS cluster while you are deploying your application. So consider if your application is a job or background process that does not require to be accessed uh, over the internet or maybe externally. Um, so in that case, you will create a task. So that task is actually running your job. So let's say if you wanted to deploy your ETL jobs or maybe similar to that, so if uh, if you have such kind of implementation so you would cho choose to go with task uh, and imagine if you have a service to be services or microservice to be deployed that actually expose some apis so in that case you you consider your implementation with services uh, what services does services actually creates a load balancer on top your uh, top of your container and your container is being exposed through uh, uh, application or maybe a uh, elastic load balancer so you know, so there are prerequisites to deploy your application code or application or microservices within the ECS cluster so the first step we need to do is we need to create a task definition in this task definition we will supply the information re uh, regarding our container um, and the things we would like to uh, configure in our application so create the first task definition. It will ask you the launch time compatibility. So as we discussed, we choose to go with EC2 implementation. So while we were creating a task definition, we will choose the same, the one we created the cluster. So we created an EC2 cluster, so we'll go with the same. So here we need to supply the task definition name and we will say it Apache demo. Uh, and then uh, it requires EC2 instances. Obviously, we choose the implementation compatibility with EC2. Now, the next thing is we need to create a role. Imagine if you do not see any role, so you could create an IAM role using IAM console. From the IAM console, what you can do is you can go to the role. From the role, we need to click on the create role button uh, and then select the use case for your role in the use case we need to search elastic container service under the elastic container service we need to choose the option and we need to click on the radio button with actually uh, name with elastic container service task that actually allows your uh, aws uh, sorry ecs task to call aws services on your behalf so click on the next button from here you need to uh, choose the task execution predefined policy. So there is a policy already created for task execution. So you need to click on the check button and then just click on the next. And here we need to name it ECS task execution. Once you named it, you just need to click on the create role. Once the role is created, if you go back to the ECS console and click on the refresh button, so you will start seeing the role. As of now, we are going with the existing role. Uh, since we wanted to override our network configuration and network mode while we were using or creating services, so we can leave it as a default. And then uh, task execution role, we can choose the same uh, execution role that we create, uh, we choose on here. Now we need to define a task memory. So let's say if your application requires 128 megabyte of RAM and uh, 10 CPUs, each CPU unit. So it says one vCPU. Okay. So uh, we need to choose 1024. So that means one vCPU. 
one zero two four means one C V CPU. If we choose one, so it it says it must be greater than two fifty six. So we can choose with two fifty six megahertz. So it says you share two fifty six CPU units. Now we need to define our container specification. So uh, let's search for Apache image HTTP D Docker image. So we can choose the official HTTP image from the Docker Hub. So we can choose HTTP D along with some tags like two point. So this is the image we going to be used in our task definition and we will be calling it as Apache container. It's just a container name. So if you have any private repository and you restricted with some authentication, just click over here and uh, add the uh, credentials. Uh, since uh, we have only one container, so we can use the port mapping. This is the host port and this is the container port. Our container is running on eight, port 80. If we choose to go with other ports, we can define over here. So there are some health checks command you, we can add. Uh, since we are uh, just creating a demo, so we are leaving them as a blank. If you have any health check command that you would like to access or uh, you would like to execute as a health check, so you can define over here. Let's say uh, you wanted to test your application locally, uh, so you can you can execute in the same way. Um, then if you you can define the environment for CPU unit, GPU unit, any any. Uh, entry point command as well so there are a lot of things we can do we can define the work directory so these all are related to the specifically to the container if we wanted to mount read only root system or there are mount uh, mount files or mount points we, will, we we wanted to add to the container so we can add it from here like uh, we can we can send the logs to watch uh, aws uh, cloud watch so uh, once we click on the here, uh, click here, it will start uh, pushing the logs to the AWS CloudWatch. Then we have a uh, security parameters. We can define a user uh, from which user you would like to run the container. So and th there are other um, other parameters we can add, but uh, since this is a demo, uh, we are not focusing on the advanced configuration. So we are leaving most of the uh, options as a default so just click on the add container button so uh, there are more options uh, we can app we can add app mesh integration we can add proxy but we are not going with all those options at the moment so uh, we just wanted to click on the create task definition so the task definition is ready now we need to go to the cluster and under the cluster we need to click on the create service since we already discussed that we need to expose our application to the internet so the launch type is ec2 so we can uh, the task definition file is automatically being picked if you uh, if you have multiple files uh, or task definition it will be listed over here from the revision if you create multiple revision you can uh, it, it could be listed down over here uh, in the cluster button, you, you need to choose on which cluster you would need to deploy this task definition. Uh, and this is the service name. So this is the friendly service name. We, we will be calling it as a Apache service. And there are two types of service, replica and daemon. A replica means it will create a number of replicas of your container. Like if you choose to go with two containers, it will create two replicas. If you choose to go with daemon, that means it spawn one instance of a one, one instance of a container on each EC2. So we will be creating a, num a number of tasks is one. So these are the some default parameters. We are leaving it as a blank default. So this is the deployment type. So we are going with uh, rolling updates, blue greens um, that is actually related to the code deploy. So we are going with the default. Then uh, 
task display and task placement we are leaving uh, with default easy balance spread now here it, it will be asking uh, by which uh, by how you would like to expose this application so we can choose with application load balancer but that uh, that load balancer requires to be created before you um, like you create uh, you create this task or service so if you did not create any on uh, load balancer so you could you could create from aws ec2 console so we can just go to the ec2 console create a load balancer and we will we can say create load balancer and we'll be saying uh, load balancer apache ecs internet facing and we will be creating in the in our project ppc because we already launched our ECA task in the same VPC. So we are choosing public subnet since uh, we choose the scope public. So this is our listener. We need to create some target group as well. <clears throat> so uh, this is our instance type. Target group name is ECS Apache and provision protocol we are using http2 and we just go with the default uh, and this is our instance if we like to choose this instance we can just choose it as an include if we do not have any instance we can just go directly without it so our target group is also created now we need to go back to our ecs console if we um, it's actually provisioning it's in the provisioning status so okay yeah we, we need to uh, we need to uh, choose the target group from here our target group is created yes it is created we need to go to our load balancer see why it's not showing it should be showing over here there must be something wrong with the target group so let's create another target group maybe it's it would be in the different ecs it should list here yeah we got it so we need to click on so our load balancer is provisioning so the one task is done we need to go back to our ecs and from here we need uh, our load balancer is a start testing so this is the container port automatically being picked uh, from the container task definition file we need to click on the add to the load balancer once this is done we need to click on the next uh, there's something is missing okay uh, we need to uh, listen create the listener so yeah that is done uh, at this it, it it will be asking for auto scaling policy either we choose with do not adjust or we can say configure a service auto scaling uh, so we are leaving it as a default uh, just click on the next so it will give us 
the more highlights about our services so it start deploying our service it take a little while to get it completed so yes our uh, service is deployed so soon we will start seeing the service so the task is in pending state so it's in running so if we need to access our application so we need to go to our load balancer we need to copy the url and if we access it so let's see now whether we allowed the port 80 for inbound role so first we need to add the inbound rule and we need to add http and go anywhere save the rule let's refresh so yeah it's working our application is successfully deployed so you can deploy and you can create as many as task definition let's say uh, we, we deployed one version so imagine you have an, uh, another version to be deployed so you you can you first what you need to do is you need to update your task definition files so let's say uh, you need to update your image type image so what you need to do is you need to click on over click over here from here action update service and from here you can update your uh, task definition for the service so there are things you can do uh, you need to create a, a new task definition as well while you are updating so click on the create new revision from the revision uh, you can you can change change the parameters from here like you can add more container you can uh, you can change the image from uh, container if you need to uh, update the memory if you need to update the role uh, networking model and anything so you can you can define and change from here task definition once you are done with your changes uh, what you need to do is you need to go to your test cluster and click uh, on select the service update it and from here you can define the latest version so it, uh, the version will start listing over here so yeah that's it from this video i hope you like with uh, you guys like this video if you really like this video and content uh, so don't forget to subscribe our channel and share our videos uh, thank you for watching this video